Services. Um, Minister Roderick O'Gorman is in the House and is ready to take his seat. Deputy Kathleen Funchen, Deputy Funchen, you're moving this motion. You, you have 20 minutes. Um, thank you very much, Karen Corla. I'm sharing my time with colleagues and thank you to the ministers as well for being here. I'm delighted to move and um, introduce this motion to the Dáil this evening for debate. And firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the early years educators that assembled outside Leinster House this morning to highlight the serious issues with the National Child Care Scheme. And I know, Minister, you, you'll know I've mentioned this to you before, and I acknowledge that you've been saying there's a review um, underway, and I sincerely hope that you can guarantee that under allo the under-allocation of hours through NCS and the provision of after-school care will be looked at and that you and your department will take on board the serious concerns highlighted and discussed this afternoon also in the Children's Committee, because there was a discussion on that just before this debate. Um, I would also like to acknowledge, Minister, that you did come out to that uh, group today and you did meet with them and speak with them, and I think that's important, and I think that that should be acknowledged in fairness. Um, however, I am very disappointed, although maybe not surprised, that there is amendments to the motion here um, this evening, but in my opinion, it's a case of kicking this situation down the road even further. We don't have a great track record um, in relation to investment in the early years. And I think actually that was even acknowledged by some government parties over the weekend. We continue to facilitate a piecemeal approach to the early years. And um, I was, again, as I stress, I was very disappointed to see um, amendments to our motion. Um, despite all the commitments and policies that are unveiled, we are still faced with a situation where parents, in some cases, are paying the equivalent of a second mortgage or second rent. And a recent UNICEF survey ranked Ireland among the world's most expensive countries for early years and childcare. And we know the repercussions of exorbitant fees creates a significant barrier, particularly to women's employment. Women are adversely affected by higher fees, with many forced to stay out of the workforce while their children are small. And I've always thought it is really disingenuous for us to encourage women to go back to work and also um, as we're in a political chamber to encourage women into politics when we don't actually often have the services and the infrastructure um, you know to support their return to work and I am somebody that regularly has that juggling situation um, so you know I just think I try and raise that as often as I can in this chamber and I will continue to do so until maybe we actually see some changes in relation to it. This motion is about providing families with a high quality early years education system that is affordable, accessible and sustainable. And I think it's obvious to everyone here tonight and in the wider public that the early years sector is in crisis. And that would, those were some of the comments from the committee earlier today as well from, from the witnesses. It also goes without saying that early years and childcare was in crisis before COVID, during COVID and will remain in crisis after COVID if we do not see the serious commitment to sustainable investment that's needed starting with next week's budget. I'm constantly con contacted by parents, early years educators and providers wanting to share their experiences using work and or operation in a broken system. And I know I'm not the only TD here this evening that has witnessed these failings of the current funding model in, in my constituency and all the constituencies around the country. It must be resourced adequately to provide lower fees for parents and stability for highly qualified professionals, but it must also deliver a sustainable future for providers. And those are the three key issues. The fees are far too high for parents, the wages are far too low for workers, and there's a serious issue for providers trying to keep their doors open. Um, the current funding model, I would say, is failing children, their families, their educators, and early years providers. And I was struck in yesterday's national development plan that only one page was dedicated to early years and childcare, with projections of a growth in Ireland's population of around one million over the next decade. I would have liked to have seen real commitment to capital expenditure and a plan for how we propose to cater for this sector into the future. Ken I'm conscious that the clock hasn't moved, so I have absolutely no idea where I am in relation to time. <laughs> I, I, I was reluctant to, to actually raise that, but I think I should say it in fairness <laughs> to my colleagues. So um, I've spoken... Okay, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I've spoken many times about those working in the sector, and I really do want to, to um, acknowledge that this evening. I mean, it's such a difficult job. I genuinely don't know how people who work in the earlier sector sometimes do it. The commitment and dedication that they have to it is incredible. And, you know, it's, it's degree-led for the most part at this stage. People are spending years in college studying and furthering their professional development and are extremely experienced and qualified educators. And after a lifetime in the sector, many are still earning less than the living wage or the minimum wage in a lot of cases. 
there is very little sick leave. Um, and what I'm always, I always try and give this example that people have to sign on for social welfare a lot of the time during the summer. And sometimes people actually don't believe that still happens, but we all know it is the reality. So it's nearly impossible to um, stay working in the sector. Um, a recent SIP2 survey showed 81% of all workers in the sector are unable to meet unexpected expenses and 38% are actively looking for work in another sector due to low pay. Now that's obviously going to affect the consistency, which is going to affect quality. So we need to see this being addressed. And as educators, parents and parents are squeezed at one end of the system, early year services, mainly small businesses, predominantly managed and owned by women, are being squeezed at the other. So I'm just going to finish on this point that the issue are fees, wages and sustainability for providers. The motion covers all of that, um, so I commend the motion to the House. Thanks, Thank Ken Ken Corla, and I'd like to commend my colleague, uh, Deputy Function, for bringing forward this very important uh, motion. I think one thing probably we can all agree on is uh, childcare costs are out of control, um, and particularly in areas of high demand. The average cost of childcare for working families is astronomical in my own constituency, and it will be the same in the ministers because we share a, a similar uh, a part of the city. The average cost of childcare for a single year could be 11,000 euros. Uh, and in some instances, families could be paying as much uh, as 15,000 euros for a single child. Uh, that same single person or couple could also be renting. Their average rent could be €22,000 a year. Uh, and, of course, we've seen recently rising costs of, of heating, rising costs uh, of petrol, uh, uh, and many other aspects of life where the cost of living crisis is just heaping huge burdens on working people. What's the consequences of that? Increasingly, young people are putting off family formation. They're putting off moving out on their own uh, with their partner uh, or by themselves and having their own children. Not because they don't want to have children, because the costs are simply too great. So we have to accept our childcare uh, model is broken, and we have to move towards a fully public model, uh, just as we have with uh, primary and secondary education, uh, just as they have in other European jurisdictions. Our over-reliance on the private sector model exclusively to provide people's childcare needs uh, has to end. Uh, and the kinds of practical, uh, credible and fully costed solutions uh, that my colleague Kathleen Funchen has put forward would mean what? It would mean the cost of childcare would start to fall. People would have greater access to childcare where the workers are better paid uh, and the is better for everybody. So all I would urge the minister to do is listen to the practical alternatives that we're putting forward help working families get access to affordable childcare uh, uh, so that people can have uh, the quality of life that they require uh, and where they're working, their children can have the quality of early years education uh, that they rightly deserve. Louise O'Reilly. And I want to commend my colleague, Dr Kathleen Funchen, not just for this motion, uh, but actually for all of the work uh, that she has done in relation to uh, childcare and continues to do. The cost of childcare has come up so many times uh, in, the, in my time in this chamber. It's one of the most recurring things that we discuss week after week. The crisis across the childcare sector has been raised here in this house and indeed across the airwaves. It's a crisis that affects workers, parents and indeed providers. Childcare costs in this state are amongst the highest in the world. They're driving up the cost of living for families, also struggling with rising rents and rocketing energy prices, which you seem to be completely oblivious to. Action must be taken because of the cost of inaction is actually wrecking people's lives and it will damage society. The model of childcare that we have is broken and we need to move towards a publicly funded <coughs> model. While average monthly full-time childcare fees are around 750 per child, I know that some families in my area are paying 1,200 plus per month for their childcare needs. However, if they have more than one child in full-time care, the cost is even more again. And you can see the way it adds up and you get very little by way of a discount for additional kids, just in case you think there's a bargain there, there's not. It's not sustainable. These extreme costs are causing parents to drop out of the workforce and to undertake full-time childcare duties. And this disproportionately affects women. And you'll be aware of that as well. It's predominantly women who will put our careers on hold, who leave good jobs to reduce their hours to part-time in order to be able to care for their children. When I was uh, a significantly younger woman than I am today, I had access to subsidised childcare. And without that, I would not have been able to either go to work. Now, at the time, childcare fees were relatively, uh, relatively manageable, I think, for most people. But where I was working and what I was earning, I would not have been able to go out to work and neither would I have been able to go to college without that subsidised childcare because it would have been too much for us 
as a family to be able to afford that. And I had that conversation with my husband about if we couldn't access subsidised childcare, which of us was going to give up work? I mean, no, that, that's what happens. So, you know, you leave people with no choices. You need to accept the model is broken and take on board the suggestions that Choc to Function has been making repeatedly and move towards a model that will work for parents because parents are being increased. Minister, I don't believe that this issue gets the attention it deserves, whether it's in this house or in the media or in discussion generally. This is one of the biggest issues out there, certainly in my constituency anyway, and when I talk to, to young families in particular. Childcare costs are crippling people. They're absolutely crippling people. It is a second mortgage for so many families. It is a weight around their necks. It prevents them from having any kind of quality of life for years on end. It means that parents are slow, or families are, or, yeah, a couple can be slow to start a family. Uh, one parent can be uh, held back from returning to work, or very often, one parent might be effectively working just to pay the childcare and just breaking even, or even maybe less than breaking even, just in order to be in a position to continue their career. And all the time that they're paying, they're paying eight, nine hundred, a thousand more euro per child, and more on top of that if there's multiple children. Um, it is absolutely crippling. Uh, and I think it is very, very frustrating for, for parents out there who are trying to do their best, who are trying to raise their families, um, and they're you know, they want to make that contribution to society, they want to work, but they're not getting the support they deserve. We don't treat this as a public service, like they do. And you can see that in terms of the per head spend compared to the rest of the OECD. We don't spend enough on childcare, we don't subsidise enough, especially compared to other countries across Europe. And that is the solution here. We have to treat this as a public good and a public service. And what Sinn Féin is proposing to do to drive down the cost of childcare is take on the cost of staff wages, to fees that go down for parents, reduce fees by one third within the first year, and then by two thirds over five years. None of this is impossible. This is about political choices. Uh, and look, Minister, I hope that you take this on board. A large part of this is the unsustainability of the sector, the fact that uh, wages are are too low and this providers can, can barely break even themselves. But fundamentally, it's about underinvestment and it's about what we decide to value. This is about early years education, it's about uh, supporting uh, young families, it's about ensuring that the decision to have a family and the decision to try and work at the same time isn't crippling, isn't uh, putting families into absolute penury and denying them of so many other things. And these are, a lot of these families are broken in other ways too, back to school, energy, uh, insurance, all the rest of it, so, uh, Minister, it needs to be addressed. Minister, I recently met with early years educators working in Roscommon and Galway on their new deal for early years, their budget submission for 2022, and I have met with so many young women in particular in early years doing a job that they absolutely love, and you can tell that as soon as you meet them but they are really struggling to get by. And even back in the last general election, I remember meeting one early years educator in Ballinasloe who was in the middle of moving back home because she could no longer afford to rent. And these are highly educated professionals and they should be paid as such. The reality for young people who are leaving secondary school, going on to college to study, to become an early years educator, and then not actually be able to afford uh, to remain in that job, it doesn't make any sense, and it should not be the reality in Ireland in 2021. The issues around pay, of course, have many other repercussions. We know that there is a major recruitment crisis. I know of one provider in particular in Roscommon who is having a terrible time in filling a vacancy. They are turning parents away because they cannot not fill that vacancy and we also have of course a major issue with retention because so many workers simply cannot afford to remain in the profession so this motion calls for entry level living wage and also for the pay scales to be introduced and that is really really important if we are going to attract people into the sector if we are going to retain them in the sector doing a job that they love to do and as has been said the cost for parents is absolutely crippling 
We saw a UNICEF report published earlier this year finding that on average households with average income in Ireland are spending up to one half of a two earning household salary to put two children through childcare. This cannot continue. As a state we are fa failing early years, we're failing the professionals that work in it and we're failing those who rely on it. We have to get this right and we have to take steps in this budget to ensure that we actually support and invest in early years for those who work in it and those who rely on it. And I hope that we will see those steps taken as is outlined in this motion next week. Gur Chris Andrews, two and a half minutes. To start off by commending my colleague Kathleen, uh, Deputy Kathleen Function on all the work she's done on this particular bill. This bill is of a vital importance to society and will have a meaningful impact on the life of a large amount of workers and their families. Year after year, the cost of childcare in Ireland is amongst the highest in the world. These sky-high prices are having huge impact on young families, adding stress and concern and worry. And on top of the high cost of childcare, families are seeing rents skyrocket, the chances of them becoming homeowners is diminishing, and households, uh, the bills are rising sharply. We now live in a society where those who wish to have children are being severely penalised as, as a result. Let us not forget that having children is, a necess is necessary for the development of a healthy society. In Dublin, the cost of childcare for just one child is upwards of €1,000 per month, with many parents even struggling to find a place uh, available to them. This enormous cost is not just having a detrimental impact on working families, but it's also having a disproportionately negative impact on women. It is preventing thousands of women, women from returning to employment and reinforcing uh, gender inequality. Affordable childcare is not just an economic necessity, it is vital for improving the quality of life of working families and getting people back into the work face, workforce and a, you know, fostering a healthy development of society. So let's be clear, childcare needs to be affordable, and it needs to be accessible locally within the community. Community childcare like that in Rings End uh, Community Centre and St Andrew's Resource Centre is what we need. Childcare rooted in the community. Childcare is not just where you send children for a few hours uh, while their parents are out working. Childcare is a place that is key to development and growth of each child. How to learn and how they interact with other children. That's a really important part of their formative years. It is vital that it is done right. Thankfully, those working in Irish childcare are highly skilled professionals that we are fortunate to have. It is essential that they are treated as such and with paying conditions that reflect the impact they have on so many young people. Gurmagal. I apologise in advance to the Minister that I won't be here to hear his contribution, but having seen the Government amendment, I have to say that I'm really, really disappointed because Deputy Kathleen Function has provided a route that will actually ensure that we can deliver affordable childcare. And this is crucially important in a state where many families are already facing a cost of living crisis. When we're dealing with the highest mortgage rates in the Eurozone, the highest rents um, possibly in the Western world. Um, and we couple that with the experience of so many families who either decide in some instances that I'm aware of not to have children that they would desperately love to have or that they remove themselves from the workforce simply because of the cost of childcare. That's another crisis to add to the list of crises that this government are presiding over. And in so many areas of the cost of living crisis, the government can say there's nothing we can do. There's nothing we can do about high insurance costs. There's nothing we can do about um, the cost of, um, of sending kids to school. There's nothing we can do about transport costs. They have to increase because of our global uh, um, um, climate obligations. We can't build houses overnight. Deputy Function has provided the route that we can tackle the cost of childcare overnight. All it takes is the political will and the investment. And next week will provide a huge litmus test for this government. Because we will either see another budget that fails to address childcare at all, as was the case last year, or we see a start that government are beginning to recognise the crisis that is emerging and how we deal with that. And how we deal with that has to be about ensuring the families see the net result 
the week after budget, their childcare costs start to come down. We need to bring childcare costs down to about a third of what they currently are. And then we need to ensure that when our children go into their childcare settings, and their care from some of the most professional individuals you could meet that work in our, um, in, in our child care se services. One of the few sectors where consistently those who operate it um, continue to um, their, um, their education and their development. They continue to learn. They continue to ensure that the care they provide is world class. And yet, they come home at the end of the week on a pittance in comparison to other people who have equivalent um, um, education levels. So that, all that needs to change, Minister. So my appeal to you is read the proposals that Deputy Function and Sinn Féin have provided to you, and more importantly, start to implement them. Pauline Tully, two, two and a half minutes. First of all, I would like to commend my colleague, Deputy Kathleen Funchkin, for bringing forward this very important motion. I mean, she and, and indeed Sinn Féin have consistently called for uh, immediate investment in the childcare sector in Ireland in order to ensure its viability, uh, reduce the burden on parents, and to acknowledge and properly pay professionals within the childcare sector, and indeed to keep facilities open as many are finding it hard to do so. I mean, the childcare fees in Ireland are the highest in Europe, and they continue to rise, and I know there was a commitment in the programme for government last year, but they are continuing to rise since that, and couple that with the high cost of living, it's impossible for the ordinary working family to make ends meet. I mean, according to a UNICEF report in June gone by, Ireland, New Zealand and Switzerland have the least affordable childcare for the middle classes, and we have couples on an average wage are paying between a third and a half of their wages for two children in childcare. I mean, I can recall when my own two children were young and in a crash, I was paying 300 euros a week at that time towards the cost of their care so that I could go to work. And then luckily it was only for a few months because the way they were spaced, my eldest could go into the, the, the EEC. Um, ECCE scheme, which at that time was only a one-year programme. But even with that, the cost of sending the two children to be cared for, in what was an excellent facility, I have no complaints about that, but it was my biggest outgoing at the time. And fees have increased since then, along with the cost of everything else, but wages haven't. And it has to be addressed, or otherwise we're going to see many people having no choice but to give up their work and abandon pursuing career choices. And we know that this is going to predominantly affect women. I mean, within the sector itself, highly qualified professionals are being paid a pittance. I mean, most professionals in this sector are earning less than the living wage, and yet many of them have level seven or level eight qualifications. And if they feel strongly they're not being treated right, they're not being treated with respect, and they're not being acknowledged as educators. Um, the turnover of staff is extremely high as the work is hard and it can be stressful and the pay is dreadful. And it's not fair on the childcare professionals, but it's not fair on the children either who develop attachments to staff. I mean, there is a capacity issue, um, which I've raised with you before, Minister, as well, in some sectors. And childcare providers are now unable to cope with the demand because the staff turnover, again, is so high. I also, also highlight um, a fact that was brought to my attention, that there's no preschool in all of West Cavan that has an ASD or, or facilities for um, children with additional needs. And, you know, it's, it's a large county and it means people have to travel long distances to get the assistance that they need. And it's good, Minister Rao, that you're here as well, so I can raise the issue with you. Um, I just urge support for the motion. Come a second mortgage for families. And people are struggling to meet these crazy costs. Now, Minister, there are parents in Dublin who are paying around 800 to 1,000 euros a month for one child. Now, working families simply can't afford this, and it can't continue. The situation for struggling families has only gotten worse in recent years, and will continue to get worse unless you, the Minister, does something about it. The sector needs intervention from the government, and we need a publicly funded childcare system that is accessible to all. The current approach to childcare has failed miserably. We've seen in the last few budgets that the government aren't committed to making the changes that are required. But I do hope next week is different. Minister, we have to start paying childcare professionals a proper wage and start treating them as professionals. They're leaving the sector in the droves at the minute.
because I can't make ends meet after a week's walk because of the terrible pay. They need to be paid a proper wage that reflects the important work they do. Their current rate of pay is insulting. Now, Minister, we're way off the European average when it comes to money we invest in childcare in this state. Now, the programme for government made any amount of promises when it came to childcare reform, but the fears have just continued to rise. Now, Minister, we need you to act now. You do need to reduce childcare fees by one third next year and by two thirds the year after. But that's what we in Sinn Féin would do. But we all must do better for parents, for children, for the sector and for the childcare professionals. The last few years were wasted and we can't afford to wait any longer. Deputy, Deputy Adwin. So ch childcare desperately needs reform in this country. The dogs on the street know this fact. It is expensive, inaccessible, and has become akin to a luxury item, something that many families are struggling to pay for and are referring to it as being similar to a second rent or mortgage, and that's absolute madness. We know that Ireland has one of the highest childcare costs in the world. The European Commission's research put us behind only the likes of Switzerland and England, and we have some of the lowest paid professionals with 60% earning less than the living wage. Age. UNICEF research from June of this year showed that Ireland ranked among the world's most expensive countries for childcare. Look, Ireland's childcare system has been in crisis for a long time now. Our current allocation of 0.3% of um, gross national investment lags far behind the OECD average of 0.8% of GDP and the UNICEF 1% benchmark. We know families are suffering, early years and childcare professionals are suffering, and ultimately children are suffering as the sector is struggling to retain it's highly professional, um, skilled professionals, sorry, because it has consistently undervalued them. This motion, which I am proud to stand behind, has received unreserved support from a broad church of representative networks such as Early Childhood Ireland, SIP2 and the Association of Childhood Professions, Professionals. The motion seeks to address the main issues. Number one, for parents who seek to cut the cost of childcare by up to one third. For professionals, we will introduce a proper wage scale starting at the living wage and for providers, we will extend a sustainability fund to all childcare providers ensuring sustainability in the sector. Having outreach with Big Start campaigners and professionals working in the sector during the recess, recess, I was appalled to hear the depth of the ongoing challenges that they face and everyone in their sector faces. They raised three points. Number one, 94% of educators struggle to make, the, make ends meet. 84% are unable to cope with an unexpected expense like replacing a washing machine, which is absolutely shocking. And three, the sector is 98% female and one of the lowest paid in the country. Bermog. Good last count, Good childcare is an essential cog in the social and economic structure of a country and essential for a proper functioning society and economy. Proper childcare facilities allow a parent to pursue their, for example, their employment with the knowledge that their child or children are being safely looked after. People need an income to pay bills, pay rent or pay mortgages, pay for healthcare and so on. Without having the facility of childcare, many parents would not be able to work and would be dependent on the state for support and would not be in a position to pay their bills. Childcare in Ireland is, in many instances, not affordable for many parents and can be prohibitive, putting childcare out of the reach of many parents. According to figures from the end of 2019, released by the Department of Children, the average rate for a crash place in Ireland is around €800 Euros per month per child. However, monthly costs can go well over €1,000 in some areas of Dublin. These figures show that those who can afford to pay for childcare are paying the equivalent of a mortgage in fees and parents are often left with no expendable income. It is also the case that where two parents are working, one parent's wage goes almost entirely on childcare fees. Lone parents find the high cost of childcare are a disincentive for returning to work. Childcare providers are struggling themselves with increasing costs and recruitment issues. Providers are finding it difficult to find qualified childcare professionals. 
These are some of the problems relating to childcare in Ireland. Sinn Féin is putting forward solutions to these problems, some of which, as outlined in this motion, are implementing proper pay scales for childcare professionals, reducing centre-based childcare fees and raising the childminding grant to €1,500. Parents entrust their children at an important point of the child's development into the care of these professionals who are expected to socialise and educate these young children. It is time we gave childcare professionals who are doing an incredibly difficult job the proper pay and conditions they deserve. Thank you. I think there's common agreement that our childcare system isn't fit for purpose. Fees are far too high and wages are too low. Uh, childcare costs in my constituency is around 217 a week on average. Um, one end of the constituency it could be a lot higher, the other end uh, a lot lower. Choy uh, that's 870 a month and as others have said, that's a mortgage. Uh, our motion tonight is about giving families a break and childcare fee fees for parents in this state are among the highest in the world. However, our early years workers who are highly qualified professionals with degrees are paid some of the lowest wages of any sector, with many working on or just above the minimum wage. And that's if parents can even find a place for their child. Centres all across the state are full to capacity because of the lack of staff or the crippling costs. Many parents rely on grandparents. It's probably not ideal, but it's the Irish solution increasing for more and more families. Grandparents don't retire. They are expected to keep giving. Childcare needs to be dealt with in a comprehensive manner and not in a piecemeal manner. The collapse of the government's childcare scheme for frontline workers during COVID was entirely predictable and inevitable. The government did not seem to realise that a press release from a minister is not a magic wand that can mend fundamental problems in the service delivery. Claps and goodwill speeches wear thin when you are working long hours and putting your health and your life on the line. We need a state childcare system. The market has shown that it is incapable of providing a service that is either affordable to parents or fair to workers. So Sinn Féin plan would reduce childcare fees for parents by at least one third of the current wages and next year and two thirds of the year after. So Sinn Féin have long advocated for a publicly funded childcare sector that works for families, early years professionals and providers. So Sinn Féin government would ensure all children, their families have access to good quality and affordable childcare. Minister, the childcare crisis has been ongoing for years, as you know, and it has been ignored by successive governments who have been more than happy to leave the enormous burden of paying for childcare on parents, while the sector struggles with low pay for childcare professionals and providers struggle. Fine Gael have been in power for 10 years now, and nothing has changed. And with all due respects to yourselves, I don't have much hope that anything um, else is going to change. The burden of childcare on couples is absolutely enormous. We have the highest childcare fees in the world. That is damning in itself. In Louth in 2019-2020, the average weekly fee for one child per week was over €175. Euro. Families also have astronomical housing and energy costs to contend with. It's hard to see how parents, especially families that have more than one child in full-time childcare, can be expected to manage this financially. We know that people, usually women, are being forced to drop out of the workforce to pay for childcare. We know that many couples are having to put off having children between the housing crisis and the cost of childcare. And despite the cost of childcare, childcare and early years professionals are paid amongst the lowest wages in any sector. Many work for minimum wage despite being qualified professionals. And they deserve so much more than this. And if only the government would recognise that we would all benefit from providing decent paying conditions for childcare professionals. This government needs to change their attitude and value childcare and early years education as a long-term, stable career choice. The government's response this week was to increase funding through the National Childcare Scheme. That scheme is wholly ineffective and it's not the solution to the childcare crisis. And I think every deputy that stood up in favour of this motion told you that tonight. Sinn Féin's plan would be to reduce childcare fees for parents by at least one-third 
of the current average fees in 2022, and this would reduce by two-thirds thereafter. We also, my colleague Deputy Kathleen Funchkin, also has a plan to improve the pay and conditions of early years and childcare professionals, including the introduction of pay scales and full continuous professional development for all staff. We need a seismic change in how we address childcare in this state, and the government has to step up and play its part. But your budget next week will tell us whether you're listening to the people or not. Um, Cahirlach, uh, first of all, I just want to thank everybody for their contributions, um, and including yourselves, ministers. And you will know um, at this stage that it is an issue I've been talking about for a long time. And I suppose what I hear, um, I welcome some aspects because I hear that we all seem to be largely in agreement. Um, but it wouldn't be the first time we'd be in debates here where people are saying that they're in agreement, and yet actions maybe don't always match that. Um, but I do think what I like to see is people talking about the workers and the wages in the sector, the providers and the sustainability issue and the issue of fees, because they have always been the three key issues. And I feel like that message, at least anyway, to look at the positives, is getting out there. Um, from my point of view, I suppose I first brought forward a motion in relation to this in 2017, um, and that was after um, a committee report, and now Minister Rabbit was on that committee, and there was unanimous support for both that report and the motion that night in the Dáil. And yet, we didn't really see any changes. Now, I appreciate it was, uh, you're not your self-minister that was in position at the time. But then, in July 2020, um, shortly after government was formed, one of the first motions we brought forward was again in relation to childcare in the early years. And here we are a year and three months later. So, when you say you have a new funding model and a new vision, for a lot of people, they're wondering when is that actually going to kick in? And in fairness to everybody involved in this, um, the sector, and I think you saw that as well yourself today, how welcoming they were when you actually went out and, you're, and you were speaking to them. Nobody expects that this is going to happen overnight. Everybody knows it's going to take time and everyone knows it's going to take significant investment. And that's where we do need to get to. We do need to get to, um, you know, publicly funded childcare early year sector, and it will take time, but we need to see some action. We need to see the start of that. You know, you, you can't have a plan on paper and expect people to constantly, you know, have trust and faith in you if they don't actually see any actions coming out of that. And I think that's one of the key things. And I would be really hopeful um, that in next week's budget, we will see the start of that investment in terms of the workers, in terms of the providers, and in terms of fees for parents. Because, you know, we all could tell countless stories all day and all night in here of the various issues. And I think some of the examples that we heard at committee today of those working in the sector who can't actually afford, you know, on kind of unexpected expenses, you know, to actually go and be qualified and do your degree and be working away for years and then you're, you're still in that situation, it's very, very disheartening. And for providers who are largely um, women, you know, that po possibly started out with this service um, in their home and it maybe grew from there, and now all of a sudden they're totally bogged down in paperwork and regulation, and nobody has an issue with rules and regulation, particularly when it comes to children. However, there needs to be a common sense approach to that as well. Um, so I always try and focus on the three issues of fees, sustainability, and wages, but there is obviously other issues too around like the inspections and maybe having one body to do the inspections. Um, but I just, I think that that's to try and focus the mind on, on those issues. That's why I always keep it to that. Um, I want to finish on a quote from somebody who works in the early years, um, who over the weekend was in contact with me. And he actually said, it's very simple. We can't continue as we are. We need a new fairer way for everyone. And I really think that sums it up. It really is that simple. No, and as I said, no one expects it to be overnight changes, but they do expect some action, some actual, something that they can hold on to. Somebody at committee today said they need the, that hope, that level of hope. So there does need to be something in the budget next week. And I really hope that there will be. Um, as I said, we obviously can't support the amendment. I don't support the amendment and I am disappointed. And from my point of view, um, I think it's coming up on six years now since 2016 raising this and some people in here will tell you that's not very long. To me it seems like a very long time to be constantly raising the same issue and while I feel 
the message is getting across maybe a little bit more, we still actually have to do something uh, tangible, something that people can see and hold on to. So we won't be supporting the amendment, um, but I, I do very much look forward to the budget next week and really hope that there's something in it for those working in the sector, for those providing the sector and for the parents that rely on it and ultimately for our children. Who, you know, who benefit from this. And sometimes we forget that in the middle of it all, the benefits that there is for children in the early years sector. So thank you very much, Carlach. On this board, Craig Naha, Sian Kest, Anish Nogan Nienfer, on Lassu, that the amendment be made. Nahakti er Atar Hev Nikesta, Aberdeesh To. Nahakti Ato Inaquina, Aberdeesh Neil. Shilam Gul on Kest Ritta. Um, the division is deferred until the weekly division time.